So let's talk a little bit about veneers then. Yeah. Do you, would you call them veneers or laminations or what, what do you well, call them? Well, you're, you're starting with veneers. So the individual layer of wood is called a veneer. Uh -huh. Once it's bonded together, like we have done with, with this, I'll refer to that as a lamination. A a laminate, which some people you hear that, that term used, isn't a term that I would apply to this. A laminate that is more often what um, you'd call um, a product like Formica, is what's a, uh, it's a high pressure laminate. But this is a lamination, so this is layers of material that have been bonded together. And so, what are the advantages of using a veneer over a, a solid piece of wood? Well, there, the, use? The, there are several. I mean, from a cost point of view, veneers are cheaper. Than, than solid wood um, so you can buy some very very highly figured veneers at a much lower cost than you could buy the equivalent solid you can probably source them far more easily than the equivalent solid um, and there's a much wider range of veneers available than, than there is solid um, so if you start laminating guitar components you've, you've got more choices I mean this, this one is a particularly crazy example but you know the even things like bird's eye maple, you can find very, very nice bird's eye maple veneer far easier than you can the equivalently high quality solid. Virtually impossible yeah. to find yeah. as solid and virtually impossible to bend as well. Yeah. So to be able to make an acoustic from bird's eye is pretty spectacular. Yeah. Well, I'll, I've got one of the Macaferi, or the other Macaferi nylon strung that's nearly finished. That That's in bird's eye maple. So I'll, I'll post some pictures of that. Yeah, brilliant. <coughs> Check on the website and uh, we'll put some pictures up of that. How does it normally call? Bundles, bundles of veneer are normally, um, well, this one excluded, this is slightly different, but normal natural veneers um, will be supplied in bundles of either 24 or sometimes 32 leaves. Now, it's not to say you'd have to buy what all... What size are the leaves? <laughs> It completely depends. If you're making guitars, you, you would kind of buy bundles of veneer that are an economic width um, for that process. So for making sides, if you're pressing at 130, you might be aiming to buy veneer that's 150 or 160 wide or sort of twice that so you can get two leaves or two sides out of a leaf. Um, so it comes in different widths? Different widths as it comes off of the tree. You know, the, um, different types of veneer come in different widths. Rotary cut veneer because of the, the almost like pencil sharpener process tend to be really quite wide. Yeah. Crown cut veneers again tend to be quite wide. Quarter cut veneers like you would uh, normally find the very figured you know the ripple figuring sycamores maples they tend to be quarter cut they will be narrower um, so maybe 200 mil wide um, but you know it's it's a question of sourcing materials and you know I, I'm aiming to supply the education market with well, i already do this supply the education market with veneers and i've got all the facilities for cutting and chopping veneers to to given sizes so did you bring some veneers to show us i, think I did you. yeah have a quick look at those yes by all means um just to show you what the kind of maybe okay. i'll pass them yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah lovely is that the pack yeah that's in. so the, these are actually all veneers um, that have been prepared for use in laminating sides. And so where do we get these from? Well, you can go to veneer merchants, you can come to me, um, you can probably come to me through you. Um, quite happy to see how that... Should we put a link in? Yeah. Maybe yeah, we can do that. get it from. Um, and, you know, I'm quite happy to make up packs yeah. of veneers specifically, you know, with all of the intermediate layers, the face layers, the back layers and everything else for, for people, that's not a problem. So these are just tulip wood, so th these are the, the, the poplar, tulip wood so poplar. this is what you use for the core? This is for the core. Some cross grain pieces. Yeah, that's right. Just remind us again what, what we do with the cross grain pieces. Okay, well, let's find a natural timber rather than one of those wacky ones for this. Okay, so let's take a bit of bird's eye. The bird's eye would be really difficult to bend if you wanted to do that by hand. Yeah. And just going back to the natural veneer side, you'll quite often find it's easier to buy spectacularly figured veneer than it is spectacularly figured solid, just purely because it is so much more valuable. Of course. Well, as I understand it, they would put that stuff aside when, as, as it was um, processed. Yeah. They would say that's, that's 
for veneers. Keep that yeah. for veneers. That's really special stuff. Yeah, exactly. So that's why the veneers are always really spectacular. Yeah. As opposed to solid wood. Yeah. One of the main advantages. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that you can't really see it properly in the light, but that is a really pretty, it's got a bit of quilting Beautiful. figure in it, but bit uh, of really it. nice deep bird's eyeing. So that would be the face layer. Going into the, um, the layup, you then have a cross grain layer. You then have another central long grain layer, another cross grain layer, and then finally either another bird's eye if you're doing it both inside and out, or something like figured sycamore, um, or any other veneer that you want to put on the inside. So you end up with five layers of veneer, three going long grain, two going cross grain. And have you found any difficulties with doing cutaways, sharp ends? I, I didn't, no. No, the, the Macaferas that I've done, there was no, there was no issue with that at all. And one of them we'll I've done in bird's eye. In bit, yeah, one of them I have done in bird's eye and it, it worked a treat. So let's have a quick look at these so, veneers then. Okay, so here we've got another one of the man-made veneers, different, different um, So it's man-made by gluing up. Plantation-grown veneers, so these are all highly sustainable. They bleach them, they dye them, they then compress them again over a bumpy mould to form the, 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 the grain pattern, if you like, and then they're sliced again. So yeah, the, that's why it's got all these little... Yeah, on. I mean, the, the process is quite extraordinary. And there are a couple of Italian companies that do it. There are now several Chinese companies who are getting into it in a big way and doing a very good job. I think these are actually Chinese. It's spectacular to look at. Um, amazing. Um, it's a really yeah. lovely figured walnut. Again, difficult to find yeah. wood as nice as this in, in solid. the more highly figured it is, the more difficult to bend. Yeah, yeah. And the more expensive and you know, the more swearing is involved if you yeah. crack it. Doing it by hand. Um, that's like, this is actually some Brazilian rosewood that I got from a friend of mine. Again, beautiful, beautiful wood of unfortunately no commercial value to anybody anymore because we can't sell anything that we make with it exactly. which is a, a real shame but if you're making yourself a guitar yeah I've um, got a piece of a beautiful fretboard I've been saving for myself yeah. well I've got I've got four tea chests full of Brazilian rosewood um, parquet floor tiles which are just big enough to go on my router to machine a bridge from but you're gonna have to get busy I'm, I'm gonna have to have a bigger house <laughs> um, Maybe things will change after Maybe, that, maybe. Um, well, I'm not sure. See, I, I completely understand the need to conserve and to, to ban the export of those types of woods that have been over. Yeah, I mean, I think there should be some kind of control on it. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a resource. It's one of our most valuable resources that should be used. Yeah. But it's almost become the, the timber equivalent of ivory. You know, it's all sorts of um, but there's bad associations. there's a lot of it just going to waste. Yeah. Um, in various places, mm. it should be used. Yeah. I think. So this is, this is a really beautiful wood that I've used on on one of the guitars. Um, she's called Tropical Olive. Um, again, I've never seen this. Olive wood. Yeah, right, it's called Tropical Olive. Tropical. So it's not olive, as in you know the wood yeah, that you see. Olive wood, which yeah. is, smells actually like olive oil. Yeah, this this, this doesn't <clears throat> have that same. Um, no, but it's gorgeous, it, and but that almost looks like a rose, you know, rosewood. It does, it looks, well, it's more like the old Indian rosewoods, the kind of the browner rosewoods. But it, it finishes beautifully, it works beautifully, very, very pretty yeah, wood. This is one of my favourites. This is Massa Birch, and this is a rotary cut veneer. Yep. And this, this comes from birch trees that have had a parasitic infection, or at least it's assumed it's from a parasitic oh. infection. And the, the tree reacts to that infection by producing this incredible sort of flame-like. Yep. I mean, there are lots of holes in it, so you use your grain filler uh -huh. on this. Grain filler, you do need to grain fill it. What I found with the grain filler is I find it better to put one coat of lacquer on and then grain yeah, fill it. Because yeah. um, I find that the lacquer kind of brings the grain out more. If you just put the grain filler on, it can kind of seal it all off a little bit and then the lacquer doesn't penetrate. But again, you would never find this, this material in well, A is a solid at all, but certainly not in bits big enough that you can make a guitar out of it. Okay. But it does just make a really, really pretty, pretty guitar. That is Santos Rosewood. Right. Again, these are all bookmatched, so you know, 
at the end of your guitar. It's another thing about veneers, isn't it, is that it matches better than... It, it matches almost perfectly. ...saw cut, because there's always that bit of waste in the middle. Yeah, absolutely. The saw cut. So they never match perfectly. Yeah, I mean, that uh, that would nice literally stuff. have come, you know... Yeah, it's literally next to there's, there's nothing. There's nothing in between the it's grain perfect. there. So, you know, I guess the overhead camera's picking up that, that match. Lewis will get a shot. Perfect. <laughs> It's Santos. Beautiful. And then this is another wood. I have seen guitars made of this. It's called Tinio. It's almost a bit, it's the same type of density as, I'd say probably maybe a little bit harder than cherry, somewhere between cherry and walnut from a, a hardness point of view. But it has these spectacular kind of black and red on orange stripes to it. Um, oh, make a lovely guitar. I haven't made one out of this yet. I will do. I've got lots of this. I bought a load of this. Um, Seems to be a lot more variety with, uh, with veneers than there is available with the solid wood. This doesn't even begin to touch on it. I mean, I've, I have got wallets of veneer samples that have probably got 200 species of veneer, of which I would say maybe at least 30 or 40 of them would be interesting for making guitars with. And that's not including any of the, the, the fancy man-made ones. I mean, they do, they do a man-made one now that looks like snakeskin. You know, coloured yeah. snake skin. Oh. This is just. Well, we need to see some of this stuff. <laughs> so um, we'll include links for this yeah. underneath or wherever you put yeah. links nowadays. Yeah. We'll put links there so you can get hold of some of this stuff. Thank you so much for showing us that.